In this video, expert medical advice on ticks and Lyme disease from a doctor here in the Scottish Highlands. Five things you really do need to know from avoiding ticks in the first place to what to do when you almost inevitably get bitten. Know your enemy. This is a tick. If you get bitten, it does not automatically mean you'll get Lyme disease. In this video, we'll tell you the five key things you need to know from finding ticks to removing them to when to call the doctor. This is important for us because adventure cycling and swimming is what we do here. We offer cycling reviews and tips like this. We have a popular series for beginners called Stuff Cyclists Don't Tell You. And specialist expertise comes from journalist and extreme triathlete Sean McFarlane. You can find more at our website and please subscribe. Because the chances are you will not feel the tick. It'll bite you, it'll squirt into you a fluid to keep your blood flowing, and then it will feed. Heather, grass moors and woodland, especially April to October, you'll find ticks. From the New Forest to Richmond Park, the Peak District to the Scottish Highlands. They don't fly or jump, they're tiny spiders and wait for you to brush past and attach themselves. While you're riding or walking, they are crawling into a place to hide and bite into you. Dr. James Douglas is an expert on ticks and he knows they can be tiny. I think the tick which most people would think about is the sort of thing that you remove from your dog. So in other words, it's a thing that looks about melon seed size. But earlier in the life cycle of the tick, um, there's a thing called a questing nymph, which is like the teenager stage of the tick life cycle, where they go around searching uh, blood and they are really the, po the poppy seed size. So they're really, you can look at your skin and sort of think, what's that? It might be a little speck, but in fact, that is a tick. That's exactly what happened to me when shooting some bikepacking videos. One must have crawled down my sock. I found it on my ankle when I got home. I removed it, how to do that in a moment, and next to my finger, you see how small it is. Prevention is all about covering up, so obviously ticks love it when you wear cycling shorts. Uh, you'll probably need some sort of midge repellent here in Scotland, so try to get one that says on the label explicitly that it works on ticks too. DEET is nasty stuff, but it does work, and I stick that behind the backs of my legs. You can also get products with permethrin, and you spray that on your clothes in advance. And it's worth taking these precautions when you hear how ticks operate got a special sort of beak called a physome where it kind of locks and twists onto you and it's got to hang in there for about 12 to 24 hours. The first thing that it does is it's, it squirts in an anticoagulant to thin the blood so that you can get your blood back the way. And that can cause a red spot up to the size of a pound coin. However, one in every 10 ticks carry a bacteria which causes Lyme disease in humans, the ticks which are fed on wild animals. And if the animal, the small animal is infected um, during a blood meal onto one of these, one of these animals, like a roe deer, for instance, the, the, t the tick will have picked up that bacteria into its stomach. And when it's locking onto you to get the blood meal, it will inject that bacteria into you. And that's the whole business about disease transmission. That is how Lyme disease occurs. So the tick has got the thing in its stomach and it is locked on. These are the places to check on your body for ticks or a mark left by a tick. Check anyone you're with too, buddy checks are ideal. Especially if you're camping, don't just dive into your sleeping bag. Also, if you've bared your backside to answer a call of nature, you might have picked up a tick. If you're solo or shy, use the selfie mode on your phone to check places you just can't see. Only delete the photos after. So the key thing in trying to prevent Lyme disease or any problem with infected ticks is that you've got to try and get the tick off without squeezing it because if you squeeze the body of the tick, all you'll do is facilitate that disease transmission. You're basically squirting, squirting the, tick, the tick's stomach contents into your blood, into your, into your body. So don't try to remove it with normal tweezers or your fingernails. You might squeeze its body fluids into your body or leave its head behind locked into your flesh. 
Even these specialist mosquito tweezers are too big for tiny ticks. And this pen device is better for dog tick removal. Best are these credit card lifters or ideally these tick twisters. It's really hard to film a demonstration of how to use these tick twisters because ticks are so small it's difficult to get the camera close enough. So we're going to mock one up. Uh, don't laugh. Going to use a grape as the body of the tick, a little cocktail stick sticking out of it as its beak, and we're going to push it into what, an orange to simulate human flesh. There we are. It's bitten onto you. And then we take the tick twister and the idea is to get under the body of the tick around the beak and then twist and the tick comes away. Don't eat it afterwards. What we worry about is a rash that comes up and starts spreading. A spreading redness is the, is the key to it. Anything beyond 10 centimetres is, is the worry. When you Google these things and you look for pictures of Lyme disease, it'll almost inevitably come up with a picture of a target. It doesn't necessarily look like a target, so don't be put off if it's not an exact target. Get a spreading redness that's occurred and it's continuing to spread. That will become apparent around about a week afterwards. If you get that rash, then make sure you take a photograph of it because the rash can disappear, it can fade, and that what might happen is, is the bad germ in the tick might be going deeper into your body at that point um, and then affect your joints um, or your nervous system. If you get that spreading rash, it's time to see your doctor and take the photos with you. Although Lyme disease can also occur with no rash and give flu-like symptoms, weaknesses, joint pain. Lyme disease can be treated with antibiotics, but the later treatment starts, the longer it can take to cure. If we catch the, the Lyme disease at the simple rash stage, it is completely curative with an antibiotic and that's the end of it. The difficulty is if the, the corkscrew bacteria has gone deeper into your body and they seem to be attracted to either to the nervous system or to joints, then it can cause uh, much more difficult symptoms to treat. Again, it is curable with antibiotics, but it's much more difficult to pick up and treat. At that stage, um, a blood test is required to confirm that that's what the problem is. And if the blood test is positive and you get antibiotics, you will get better, but it might be quite some considerable time before you start feeling generally better. It, sometimes it can take up to two years even to be completely over it. One of the things is we've got to get this in proportion. I'm keen on outdoor stuff myself. I like hill walking, I go wild swimming. I pick up ticks myself. I'm very, very clear that the health benefits of going outside and going mountain biking, going wild swimming, any of these outdoor sports, far outweigh any risk of picking up a tick and developing Lyme disease. So I would encourage everybody that's listening, go out into the great outdoors. There is no problem. We've just got to learn to deal with it. Huge thanks to Dr. Douglas for taking the time to do this video. If you've had experience of ticks, do let us know in the comments, especially if you can add to this knowledge. And it would be fantastic if you'd subscribe and give us a thumbs up. And we'll see you again next time. Bye.